thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. Now we're going to be turning to a topic that I think a lot of you will have fun with, but you unexpected fun. We're going to be talking about mushrooms and the fungi that grow among us out there in our gardens. And I'm joined by Ashley McKenzie. And Ashley, this is a topic that a lot of people out there are very wary of. They see a mushroom or something growing in their, in their garden, they instantly think danger or warning, this is poisonous or something bad is happening. Why are you interested in mushrooms? I've been interested in mushrooms ever since I learned that my great grandmother from Lithuania did forays out in the wild you know, forests. And I just kind of was intrigued by that, started reading, and then came to find out how beneficial mushrooms really are for the soil, for recycling toxins and waste out of our environment. Mm -hmm. And they're actually quite, um, quite nice to eat in certain varieties. I think the general fear comes from um, the fact that there are poisonous mushrooms and that you know when you're dealing with children or anybody else, you don't ever want to let anything bad happen, so you just say, and all, you know, mushrooms are dangerous. Right, right. Well, caution is always advised. Uh, now, it's interesting that you come from the Eastern European background because their mushroom hunts are a, a big part of the culture, actually. Yes. So, uh, so I can see being intrigued by your own heritage. Um, now, you are involved in a group that actually gets together and studies mushrooms and tries to identify them. Describe the group. Um, we're on meetup.com. Okay. We're titled the Wild or Texas Wild Mushrooming Group. Okay. And what we do is we just pick nature trails here in Austin, mm -hmm. Central Texas, and after rains we schedule a flash foray mm -hmm. and go out and take a, a nice nature hike, pick what we see, mm -hmm. and then go back after the hike, spread our find, and use guidebooks to try to identify the species. And what we're looking for is actually like culinary choice edible mushrooms okay. that we can use in recipes. Okay, so there's an actual group that goes out and identifies these things, and uh, I guess it was a little hard during the drought. <laughs> you, yeah. Sometimes you had to wait a long time between those flash forays. We haven't been very active lately. <laughs> we pray for rain every day, right, but um, right. you know, as soon as there's rain, usually the springtime is more, mm -hmm. our more active time. Well, there are all sorts of things out there in the garden. What makes a mushroom a mushroom? A mushroom is actually the fruiting body of a underground network called a mycelial mat. And this mat is interspersed probably among all habitats. Um, it's If you ever pick up the soil and you see kind of a cobwebby like mm -hmm. white structure, sure. this is the mycelial mat. And then the mushroom is say like an apple on a tree. It's the fruiting body of something that grows out of the soil when the conditions are right. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, not to be confused with a lot of other things out there, molds and other kinds of things that are in the garden. They're Definitely. their own family. They are, they're fungi. Mm -hmm. And why, you know, we see them in waves. You say you wait for rain, obviously moisture is a trigger. Are there other triggers for mushrooms? There are, there are several categories of mushrooms. Um, some decompose wood, so many gardeners might see um, the mushrooms pop up on a wood bed or a mulch mm -hmm. bed, and there's um, primary, secondary, and third decomposers of these things, so that's why you might see them in a wave. Mm -hmm. um, they come through and they kind of act on each other's progress. And then more so in the soil, there's a classification called mycorrhizal mushrooms, mm -hmm. and they actually they interact with the roots of plants and trees and actually become an extension of the roots. So when you see mushrooms, you can be sure that it's a sign of your healthy soil and that the root system of your plants are actually receiving more nutrients through these. Well, and I think that's a, a critical point. Now, often on my radio program, people will call and say, help, I, you know, I have mushrooms in my yard. What do I do? How do I kill them? You don't want to kill them. Um, I would best say, at, at the very least, just watch them and mm -hmm. let them decay, which they will do in a matter of days, days if not right? quicker. Yeah. yeah, as soon as the sun returns mm -hmm. and the dry conditions become, or the heat comes, as Central mm -hmm. Texas knows, mm -hmm. they will immediately disappear. And but the mycelial mat is still in the soil and providing that nutrient system for the plants. Okay, so very beneficial, in other very, words. Very, very. Okay, so um, I understand that. Um, you will when you go out collecting sometimes you actually try to propagate mushrooms or collect them to propagate How does one do that? Well, um, it's interesting that you ask um, a very key identifying characteristic is to take something called a spore print So if you have your traditional capped mushroom, okay, you would cut the stalk off 
take the cap with the gills side down, mm -hmm. put it on a piece of paper and wait for these things called spores to come out on the paper. And they can be a variety of colors, therefore being one of the key identifying factors. Okay. Um, then you would, if you wanted to propagate, you could take these spores and make something called maybe a spore slurry by just putting them in some water with salt mm -hmm. and pouring them on the ground. Um, you could take the spores and then do something more scientific and, and like inoculate um, a petri dish and mm -hmm. watch them grow that way. Um, so lots of different ways to do it. Lots of methods, yes. Okay. So, uh, in terms of uh, particular soils or situations in a, in a garden setting, I always think of them as growing, uh, you know, in shade and moist settings, w w heavily mulched or composted areas. Is is that typical? Yeah, it's typical. Um, many of the culinary mushrooms we're looking for actually grow off of wood. So if mm -hmm. you wanted to propagate, having um, a fresh, freshly cut wood chip bed of say oak, and then trying to inoculate this fresh wood with the spores could provide you what you wanted. And you can find spores via websites online. Um, there's also people who take logs and drill little holes into the logs and propagate shiitake, for instance, like this. Mm -hmm. Now, how, you know, do, do they survive courtesy of the spores? Do the spores have a long lifetime? I'm thinking that, for example, like in our drought situation, we may go months now uh, between periods where you, it, you would find any kind of mushroom actually uh, growing in the garden. The spores, if, if you have the spores, you've taken them from the mushroom and you keep them, say, in a refrigerated, sealed condition, they will last and then you can reintroduce them at that point. Um, one of the sayings that's in the industry is keep the mycelium running. So if you saw mushrooms appear, say, at the edge of a wood bed and you didn't add wood the next year, the mycelium, that network under the ground, has nowhere to go. So you must add the wood for the mycelium to keep running through the soil. And then next time there's rain or, say, you were to just soak your wood bed, um, mm -hmm. and as long as the temperature was also lower, Okay. Then you would see something. So you you actually you actively cultivate the mushrooms. Uh, you, you you water them and and you feed them. You can water them and essentially feed them. Yes. Right. So, and I I find it all really fascinating. And 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 uh, of course we we do want to urge caution when it comes to edible uh, mushrooms. People need to be very knowledgeable before they just go out and start popping mushrooms down, but it sounds like there's a wide variety uh, that um, you can actually grow in our area that, for culinary purposes. There are. Um, I'd say with the heat lately, it's been limiting, mm -hmm. but in the fall and spring and winter months, you can definitely cultivate a variety of mushrooms. Okay, so that's something for people to be thinking about, and I would imagine that your uh, meetup group is probably one of the best places to go if you wanted to extend your knowledge. Yeah, we would love for members to join, and um, we have a discussion board where people can post questions. Um, we've had several members post their experiences with growing, and mm -hmm. our community's kind of provided a backdrop to, hey, I found this one, or hey, I don't know what's going on here, mm -hmm. and then we can be a resource in identifying before anybody eats the wrong thing and ends up in the hospital or worse, dead. So again, caution. caution. Danger warning Will Robinson, right? So beware of, of what you're doing out there. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of the activities of the group. So uh, a culinary, I think, recipes and things like that as well, trading of all that kind of sort. Yes, we're looking for culinary recipes. It's, um, it's pretty limited to find people who experiment with mushroom recipes, especially of the wild variety, mm -hmm. since people are so limited in actually having them. Right. Um, we're interested in the recipe sharing. We're interested in propagation sharing, different methods. Um, at this point, I'm connecting with some members, just not members of our group, but Austinites at large who are becoming really active in mycology and just mushrooms in general. Um, and I'm really excited for how that's going to play out in the future. All right. Well, yeah. it's a fascinating topic and one uh, that I'm excited to learn about for the first time, actually. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that you came on the program. And it will extend when I go out into the garden now. I'll look at it in a very different kind of way. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, okay. Real pleasure. And coming up next is our friend Daphne.